Let's take a look at the idea of drainage patterns now. Drainage patterns reflect local topography, the geology, especially things like faults, and climate. Channels occur in areas where surface runoff occurs and uh, materials can be loosened and transported by the kinetic energy of water. Uh, the classification systems tell us something about topographic and geologic controls that that make water flow in different ways and also that uh, lead to erosion on a landscape. And much of what I'm going to talk about here is from a book called The Physical Environment, which is an in introduction to physical geography by Michael Ritter. And there's the link below. Here are a few questions to think about as you watch this. How would you classify Hunter Creek? And can you think of an example for any of the other classes of the systems listed below, the drainage systems? Let's start with dendritic da drainage. It's one that we think of most commonly, and it's most commonly used to illustrate what a watershed is. A uh, dendritic dra drainage pattern is the most common form, and it looks like the branching pattern of tree roots, or tree branches. It develops in areas that are underlain by a relatively homogeneous or material, material, or material that's roughly the same throughout. Uh, not a lot of uh, resistant and unresistant rocks and things like that. So the subsurface geology has a similar resistance to weathering, so there's no apparent control over the direction the tributaries take. Tributaries joining larger tribute streams, they join larger streams at acute angles, which means that that's at less than 90 degrees. And that's how you get the uh, branching uh, effect that we see that's so common in a lot of surface drainage systems, uh, especially in the Sierras. Parallel drainage, drainage patterns, uh, here illustrated by uh, uh, by the uh, little dots on the dotted lines on the map um, are patterns that form where there's a pronounced slope to the land surface. So one that where we would have a, a mountain face draining, say for example, into a valley. The uh, parallel pattern develops in regions of parallel, elongated landforms like outcropping resistant band rock bands. Uh, tributary streams tend to stretch out in a parallel fashion, following the slope of the surface. A parallel pattern sometimes indicates the presence of a major fault that cross, cuts across an area of steeply folded bedrock. All forms of transitions can occur between parallel dendritic and trellis patterns, and we'll see the, see the trellis. The trellis uh, drainage idea is an interesting one. It's, it's named after the uh, kind of the, uh, the common garden trellis. Uh, this kind of drainage develops in folded topography like that found in the Appalachian Mountains of North America. There are these downfolded, downturn folds called synclines that form valleys in which uh, we find the main channel of a stream. Short tributary streams enter the main channel at sharp angles as they run down the sides of the parallel ridges called anticlines. Tributary join, tributaries join the uh, main stream at nearly right angles. The rectangular drainage pattern is found in regions that have under, undergone faulting. Uh, streams follow the path of least resistance and are concentrated in places that are exposed to rock uh, that's the weakest. The movement of the surface due to faulting offsets the direction of the stream, and as a result, tributary streams make sharp bends and enter the main stream at high angles. And this is an example of a drainage now in the Sa San Andreas Fault in California. Radial drainage uh, develops around a central elevated point, for example here a mountain top. This, pat this pattern is, commonly, uh, is common, commonly found when you have conical shaped features such as volcanoes. The streams extend from the headward reaches upslope toward the top of the volcano. So we have the headwaters of several streams that originate uh, near the top of the volcano and then join together as they reach the base of the volcano. And here's Mount Rainier as an example of that. Centripetal drainage. This is an example of a small playa uh, that's near the, uh, that's between uh, uh, Empire and Nixon. And if you look carefully, you can see the uh, evidence of drainage on both sides of the playa draining directly into the, into the playa itself. And here, this is the uh, opposite of a radial drainage system because the streams are flowing into a central depression. And this would be a very common drainage system in the state of Nevada 
because all of our uh, drainage uh, actually flows into the state and none actually goes out of the state to the ocean. This is a pattern that's typical of the western and southwestern portions of the United States where basins exhibit interior drainage, that is that the drainage flows into these playas and never leaves, except, for, except by evaporation. Uh, in wetter times of the year, the streams feed small lakes that evaporate uh, during dry periods, and these create these large, flat uh, salt, salt beds, sometimes these dry lake beds, that as the salt dissolved in the lake water precipitates out of solution and it stays behind as a white evaporite. We have the deranged and contorted patterns. Here we have, uh, these are, these are uh, uh, developed from the disruption of pre-existing drainage patterns. And here, uh, in this case, we see a dendritic pattern that was altered by, uh, alter, altered but then overrun by a glacier. And the glacier left behind uh, fine grain material that forms wetlands and deposits that dam the stream to impound a small lake. Finally, the tributary streams appear significantly more contorted than they were prior to glaciation. And this is partly because, again, material has been deposited in a way that's uh, very different. And it's altered the topography of the uh, landscape, which also alters water flow patterns. So here are questions. How would you classify Hunter Creek? Well, let's take a look at Hunter Creek and through the ArcGIS website. Here's an image of it. Uh, this looks very much, we see the uh, outlet for drainage up here in the north, uh, northeastern corner. Uh, you, you can make out though, when you look specifically at the map with using the ArcGIS tool, you can make out that the uh, map, that the drainage pattern itself is very much the dendritic, uh, uh, dendritic pattern. Finally, if we want to look at, if you want to look for other uh, classes of systems listed below, I suggested, or the systems that we looked at, I suggest first of all that you look at some of the playa drainage systems to uh, look for some of the, the systems that are actually uh, internal, draining internally. Uh, that would be, for example, a centripetal drainage system. If you're interested in a drainage system that is more of a radial drainage system, look on the flanks of Mount Lassen to see what the drainage patterns look like there. Mount Lassen is a fairly recent uh, volcanic eruption, as the result of a fairly recent volcanic eruption, and you'll probably find a radial pattern uh, in that kind of terrain.